Hi and welcome again to Take It Out, and to part 2 of the review of the Lynx 12 V64 tablet. Now the first time round didn't go so well for the Lynx. Let's see if the replacement unit can do any better. So a quick reminder then of the last video where I was looking to replace this my Lynx 10 tablet. After looking around I discovered that Lynx had actually bought out a new tablet, the 12V32 and V64 range. And looking at the video they looked really good. So I thought I'd give them a try. So I bought this, the Lynx 1264, and it didn't really fare well. Let's see if the new one does any better. So the first thing to look at then is the mouse pointer. And as you can see, I can move it about now without it selecting areas of the screen unless I actually press down on it. So that bug is gone and it's working properly. It's also not opening any of the sidebars or programs as I use it. So let's get on and have a look at some of the programs and see how fast they'll open and what they like in use. So we'll go to uh, Microsoft Word first. I've installed the Office Suite and as you can see, it's opening pretty quick. So that's good. Now one of the things that was happening of course was that the pinch to zoom wasn't working very well. Again trackpad problem and it was going all over the place and doing various things but now as you can see it's working perfectly. I can zoom in and out just by pinching the trackpad. You can also do it on the screen of course but it was the trackpad that I was looking at last time and the key pad is working fine as well. Everything is typing properly there's no programs popping up or sidebars popping out as I use it now so that's all working as well I'll highlight the sentence there and we'll use the drop down let's I haven't actually set it up yet so let's pull up the menus and we'll increase the size and see how it scales and how quick it is and as you can see, it's instantaneous now, so that's really good. It's working perfectly. So that's Microsoft Word View, all working fine and as it should. And we close that. One thing to remember is I'm working from the side here, so I may miss some keystrokes now and again, or miss hit the part occasionally. So let's try Publisher. Let's pull Microsoft Publisher up. And again, you see it's really quick. For some reason it's off the screen at the moment. I think that's more to do with Windows than with the tablet. Let's get it back centered and open it up fully. And we're straight into it, no problem at all. Really, really fast. So that's good as well. Let's get that out of the way. And let's, what should we go for next? Let's have a look at Chrome. One of the other things that was happening, of course, in the former review was that Chrome was really slow. And let's go to YouTube as I did last time. I'll try and repeat everything that I did last time as best to my memory. Now, as you can see, the sidebar opened there, but that was my fault and not the trackpad playing up. I actually swiped down from the top. I'll come to that a bit later. So here's the videos. And if I open it up again, put it to full screen, you can see how it plays. And again, no stuttering this time. All playing nice and smoothly and very quickly, actually. And even the sound, I think, is a little bit better, which is odd. Um, not sure why, but perhaps that's a little bit better as well. Or it may be just me, I suppose. But that's all working fine, all nice and quickly. So let's go to some high intensity websites that usually take longer to load on lesser powered machines. Here's the BBC News website. Again, we can I come down a little bit. We can zoom out a little bit of lag there still, but then this website has a lot of images and it is still loading. 
We can scroll down, zoom in, zoom out. That's all working well. So BBC website loads quickly. So we can load websites, we can load the news pages and it all loads up nice and quickly. And efficiently, as I said, though, you can actually use the screen as well. And as you can see, when you use the screen, it's even quicker. Again, I swipe the edge of the screen then instead of the main part of the screen. As I keep saying, I'm off to the side here, so I keep mishitting now and again. But that time I hit the side of the screen, and I'll show you that also later on. Let's go to the most intense website that I know about. This is The Verge, and as you can see, it's full of text and videos and images, and it takes a long time to actually load onto my home PC. Uh, <laughs> so to load onto a low-powered laptop like this, or tablet like this, is quite impressive. So as you can see, it's all loading properly. And again, you can use the mouse pad to scroll, to zoom, to pinch, and to do everything else. It's all working perfectly, is what I'm trying to say. So that's The Verge. Let me close this now. So everything seems to be working as it should be now. There's no lag, no stuttering, and none of the odd things that were happening. Let me pop into weather a minute and have a look at the weather. Ah, right, okay, we've got to sign into this, so perhaps I'll do that later. I haven't set this PC up yet, this tablet up yet, fully. Basically, so that you couldn't see any of my personal information. I'll sign in and do everything else after I've done and finished with the review. So back into Google then. And we'll go to Maps this time. We didn't do this last time. So let's try Maps and see what it's like. And here's the UK. So we'll just zoom in. And that's all working really well, very fast. Every double tap of the pad takes me in a step. This is my area of the world that we're in, by the way. And I'll try and get it in to Street View as well. I can just get my fingers in the right place and get it on the icon instead of beside it. It might help. Let's try that. Ah, missed it. Okay, I actually missed the road I was trying to put it on. For those uh, Doctor Who fans out there, this road that I'm actually placing the little man on is the road that leads to the Christmas special for last year, where you see his assistant riding on a motorbike down this country lane into the TARDIS. So let's go in. We try it once more. I don't know what's happened there. I've clicked the wrong icon somewhere, I think. Try and get back to where it was and get onto this lane into Street View. Let's try this again. I'll go in a bit closer and try once more. I keep moving it as I go to press. I will get there. I'm determined. Right, there we go. It's on the street now, and we're going to Street View. And as you can see, it's really good. The image quality on the screen is also excellent, by the way. It's a full 1080p. In fact, it's higher than 1080p. It's 1200 uh, screen. So it's, as I mentioned the last time, it's not quite a 16.9 screen. It's a little bigger, a little squarer. Sorry about my phone going off there. I forgot to put it onto silent. And this is the road I was telling you about, the road that the motorcyclist actually went down into the TARDIS. We actually going the other way from where she rode. But it's working really well. It's really, really working, well, better than my Lynx 10, which it should be, because it's a newer model and it's more powerful. Let's have a look at CPU-Z. I mean, look at what the actual system's doing at the moment. So we leave this load and we'll 
see what the specifications are. You can have a look at that if you want to. Now it's hovering about hmm, around about the 440 megahertz at the moment. Remember, with tablets and laptops, when they're not being used, they do ramp down the power to the minimum power that they can use. So they slow down the processor, and then when they're under load, they'll ramp it up to its full speed, which is, I believe, 1.4 gigahertz on this, but it is quad core. Now, another program that we opened last time was the games collection. So we'll open that again. And we'll go back into free cell. Now we didn't really have a problem with this last time, but I'll I'll go through it again anyway. Let's put it into full screen for you. And yes, it's loaded quickly, it's all working well. We can move the cards about, there's no problem with the mouse pad. Nothing going wrong there. I won't play the old game and bore you, don't worry. But that's all working properly as well. So that's another of the programs that we tried last time when we reviewed it originally. Now, when you're in PC mode, when you swipe from the top of the screen down, you get the share bar pops out. I did mention this earlier. It did pop out a little earlier. If you swipe in from the right hand side, you get the notification center, of course. And if you swipe in from the left hand side, if nothing's open, you get nothing. So we need to open a few programs or apps so you can see exactly what that does. So we'll open the browser. And now when we swipe in, it gives you the selection screen. That time it minimized. It doesn't usually do that. So that's the first time it's actually done something unusual. So as I was saying, when you swipe in from the left hand side, you get the selection screen. Now it doesn't look much when you just got one item open, but when you open a few items, you'll see just how useful this is. So we'll open Chrome and we'll open the, the file browser as well. Now this time when I swipe in from the left hand side, you see you've got all the three there and you can select between them just by tapping on them. You can just take over and then slide down and share something that you found in Google or slide over and go back and close the windows that you don't need. So let's close them all now. Now the next thing that we need to look at, and I'll just type this in because it's quicker is the camera. Now we didn't look at this last time, but this tablet has a surprisingly good camera on it. This is the rear camera, of course, but it is really sharp, really good quality. And this is low light here. I know I've got my studio lights on, but it's still quite low light for a camera of this sort. So I'll take a picture and we'll have a look at that a little later. I'll put it in the video itself. So that's the camera. It does, of course, have a front facing camera as well, which I won't show you at the moment. So the keyboard is working fine now. It seems to be all functioning properly. Once or twice I miss hit it, but otherwise it's all working properly. Unlike last time when it was all over the place. Just wipe that away now because it's a bit dust is gathered there. And we'll detach it from the bottom of the tablet. It's just held on by magnets, of course. Move that out of the way. Now the tablet itself is, well, it's quite a heavy tablet, but then it's a business tablet, so you'd expect it. Let's put it into tablet mode. It is, of course, 12 inches compared to the 10 inch of the former Lynx 10 that I had. So it's going to be a bit heavier because it's got a bigger battery. Now let's go back into the browser, first of all. As you can see, it's all loading up quickly again. No problem at all there. I can swipe in from the sides. That's all working. The notification center is working. And of course, if I do that again, oh, of course, you can't do that when you're in tablet mode. You, that's for closing the screen. Uh, you can't actually bring it down as you would in the PC mode. So if I just close this now, yeah, I've got to close that screen first. It'll pop out there. And then we'll close the main screen. Yeah. Other thing, of course, is you just swipe down to close the screen there. There is another way of doing that, of course. So if I go back into it, now if you're using it in tablet mode, again, I didn't tap it quite hard enough there. And if you just go to the Windows key on the side and press that, it minimizes it out of the way. You can bring it back in by swiping in from the side. So if I go like this, there it is again, and any other open programs that you got. 
and then press the Windows key to minimize. You can use it, of course, in portrait mode. And in this mode, it's really good, I think, because it's almost, well, it's about an A4, if not a legal letter size. And that's excellent for reading documents, because if you've got letters and so on, instead of having to scroll them, you can actually read the whole document in one go. And if you sent a PDF of a letter and you want to read it in a meeting, you can just open up your PDF reader. I've got Acrobat here and just read it away. Then slide down, close it and on you go. And the same, I suppose, for ebooks, probably for ebooks. So you'd want to write, use it on the landscape mode rather than the portrait. Now, the tablet itself is extremely sturdy. It's really strong feeling. It doesn't flex at all. It's got a lovely metal back. The screen is nice, it's nice and clear, and the kickstand is two position, and it's really good. Will I be going back to my Lynx 10 then? Will I be sending this one back as well? Is it the worst tablet ever? Well, I'm really pleased to say, no it's not. The first one I had was obviously a faulty unit, and this one I will be keeping. It's an excellent tablet. It does everything that it says it does, and at half or less than half the price of a Microsoft Surface. Now, I've got to give a great big thank you and shout out to Lynx themselves, their service department, the customer support were brilliant. Within 48 hours of me pinging them for a comment, didn't ask them for anything else, but a comment on what went on in the last video, they had sent me a brand new unit in replacement of the one that was faulty. So a very, very big thank you to Lynx. Customer service beyond belief. 48 hours to replace a tablet. Thank you. And thank you all for watching.